You can save $3 off of your next PlayAsia purchase by clicking the link in the description below and entering the code KUBA. What's going on everybody, it's me Kuba, and the live stream for Dragon Ball Universe 2's DLC pack number 3 has just ended. Now we actually got a ton of gameplay of Goku Black, Super Saiyan Rose, Zamasu, and Bojack. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is pretty much breaking it down and giving my overall thoughts on the characters before the DLC releases next week Tuesday. With that being said, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to mention before I actually get into the characters individually is the fact that all three of the characters have very aggressive fighting styles and that means that they will all prosper in close quarters combat. Now naturally when a character prospers in close quarters combat, their zoning and or spacing techniques are actually not that good. But in this specific case, that's actually not true because all three of them actually do have some solid spacing material that they can actually utilize against their opponent, which I'll actually get further in depth when I actually break down the characters individually. So the first character I wanna talk about is Goku Black Super Saiyan Rose. Now he has three super attacks, which are Sudden Death Beam, Divine Retribution, and Maximum Charge. Then he has two ultimate attacks, which are Super Black Kamehameha Rose and Divine Lasso and his evasive skill is Break Strike. Now, for his super attacks, there are actually two which are brand new, the first one being Sudden Death Beam. Now, this move is actually a counter. Now, the way how it's a counter is, if you execute it without being hit, then it works like instant transmission. You actually just teleport in front of your opponent, and that'll be it. But, if you actually get struck during the counter, then you'll actually teleport behind your opponent and hit them with the blast which will send them flying. So it's definitely a tool that can be utilized for both offense and defense, because of course defense with it being a counter, but offense being you can actually close the gap between the space with your opponent and get into their zone to be able to follow up with whatever option you may have in mind. So I think that's a really cool attack to have in this game. And then we have Divine Retribution. Now this attack, is both a projectile and a melee attack, which is extremely unique because if I'm not mistaken, this is the first of that kind of attack in Xenoverse 2. Let me explain. If you actually use the attack, let's just say you just threw it out, you know, fully charged up, you throw out the attack. It actually counts as a projectile. However, if you use the attack, let's say at the end of a combo, you actually don't shoot out a projectile. You actually come from the air and slash downward towards the opponent, which actually deals some solid damage. So that move alone gives you two solid options to use in any particular case that you're in, either if you're spacing out the opponent or if you're right there in close quarters combat. You have one move that gives you two solid options, and I think that's going to be heavily used online. I really, really like the idea behind this move. And now we get to his ultimate attacks. So the first one is Super Black Kamehameha Rose, which is Super Black Kamehameha, just pink. So there's not much to really say on that ultimate attack, except it's Super Black Kamehameha, but pink. And then we have his new ultimate attack, one that I'm so happy that they included in the game because I was praying to God that they would, and they did. But he has Divine Lasso. Now, for those of you who don't know what this move is, and I would be surprised if you don't, but this is the move that Goku Black Super Saiyan Rose actually used on Super Saiyan Blue Goku, the sword attack. Now, this attack actually works kind of uniquely because when you execute the attack, you actually lunge towards your opponent. Now, of course, if you come in contact, then he will knock the opponent away, start slashing his sword around, which will actually send out these sharp, like, blade-esque projectiles, I guess. And of course, they stick onto the opponent. And once he strikes his pose at the end of the slashes, then they explode and it deals massive damage. But of course, if you actually miss the opponent while you lunge, he will still throw out the sword attacks, which will still throw out the projectiles. And of course, if it does come in contact with the opponent, then the ult will continue. Now, the one thing in particular about this ultimate attack is while he's slashing his sword around, you do have the ability to evade out of the attack. However, 
if he actually finishes all of his slashes and all of, I guess, like the sword blades are in you, at that point, you can't escape. So if you see him slashing, you better escape while you can because once that's that, like once he stops, that's it. You're stuck in the ult. So you do have the opportunity to escape that ultimate attack so long as he's still slashing, I guess. And now the biggest thing, regardless of his brand new moves that I really wanted to talk about is his fighting style. Now, I'm going to say this with the utmost pride. Goku's fighting style in Dragon Ball's Universe 2 is probably the easiest combo set to master in the game without a single doubt. Not only that, a majority of the Goku characters, minus two of them, play exactly the same. And the last thing that I wanted was to have Goku Black Super Saiyan Rose play the exact same as regular Goku or Super Saiyan Blue Goku or even regular Goku Black. So I'm extremely happy that they changed his fighting style. And from the looks of it, they really took their time with his play style because it's extremely unique. For starters, he uses his blade in his combo set. That alone has me extremely excited. But of course, they added like an extra flair to him. Like he's doing like spins all over the place for like um, finishers or like flips for finish, uh, finishers and whatnot. Like his combo set looks so nice. I'm so glad it's just not a carbon copy of just another Goku in the game. It's, it's a brand new character, legitimately a brand new character in every sense of the term. I'm extremely happy what they did with Goku Black Super Saiyan Rose, and I can't wait to get my hands on him. And now we get to Zamasu. So he actually has four super attacks, which are Heavenly Arrow, God Splitter, Shockwave, and Full Power Charge. And he has one ultimate attack, which is Instant Severance, and his evasive skill is Instant Rise. Now, out of all the super attacks I just listed, he actually has two new super attacks. Starting with Heavenly Arrow, this move is a multi-projectile based super attack which is good for spacing out the opponent because since it is a multi-projectile based attack, you can utilize this move to space out your opponent or zone them out and add pressure so they would have to approach you, which is an extremely good thing to have in his arsenal seeing that he really is CQC heavy. Another good thing about this attack is that he actually moves out of the way before he fires off the attack, which is great because let's say that you're in a predicament and you really got to get out of the way quickly, but at the same time, you're thinking of a way to actually strike your opponent. This move is the best of both worlds. You jump out of the way and you fire the attack. The opponent won't even know what's coming to him. And I think that's a very, very good move to have in his arsenal. Now, one thing I'm mixed about with Heavenly Arrow is its speed. Now, again, it's a multi-projectile based attack, much like Dai Dai Missile Barrage or Sudden Storm. But the thing is, it's in between those two attacks, if you guys see what I'm saying. It's not as fast as Sudden Storm, but it's not as slow as Dai Dai Missile Barrage. It's somewhere in the middle. So I'm trying to see when would be the best time to actually utilize this attack. I mean, of course, like at the end of a combo, but if you really need to just throw it out there to either get yourself out of the way or to zone the opponent. I'm trying to figure out like when would be like the perfect time. But of course, only time will tell because the DLC is coming out soon. On to the next attack, which is God Splitter. Now, this is another projectile based attack in which Zamasu just holds his hand out, has, I guess, a relatively large um, key blast or energy ball in front of him. He can charge it for a while and then he shoots it out, which does multi hits on the opponent. Now, the good thing about this projectile is it actually blocks key blasts, which is going to be pretty cool because for all you know, somebody could try to throw a key blast at you to try to cancel out your super attack. But of course, with God Splitter actually being out and being charged, that's not going to happen. So that's going to be really awesome to have in his arsenal. And I kind of see it being utilized at the end of a combo as well but not as much as Heavenly Arrow. But again, we'll have to wait and see. And now we get to his ultimate attack. Now his ultimate attack is completely brand new and it's called Instant Severance. Now this attack is when Zamasu turns himself to a sort of blade beam, I guess, and dashes towards the opponent. And of course, if he reaches the opponent, the opponent will be temporarily stunned and he'll finish off his ult with a final slash, which deals 
ridiculous damage. And I'm extremely surprised because when I first saw the move in action, I thought that it wasn't going to be as strong as it probably should have been. But I'm extremely glad that I was mistaken because the move is really powerful. Now, the one great thing about this move is the fact that it has a really good amount of super armor. Now, what I mean is, if someone were to fire off an ultimate attack, and you actually utilize your ult while they're doing their ult, you'll actually dash past their ult because of the super armor, still be able to land both your attacks and deal that nice damage. So that is really, really good. And also if I'm not mistaken, you can't really reverse dash and try to break his stamina while he does that attack. You'll get behind him, but you won't break his stamina. So I definitely see this being used a lot, now, there could be downsides with this ult, but I didn't really see too many, if any, for that matter, while I was, like, watching all the footage online. So, again, instant severance, brand new ultimate attack, it looks extremely strong, and I'm fairly certain everybody's going to enjoy it when they get their hands on it. And last but not least, we have Bojack. So Bojack has four super attacks, which are Trap Shooter, Reverse Launcher, Psycho Barrier, and Maximum Charge. And he has one ultimate attack, which is Grand Smasher, and his evasive skill is Instant Rise. Now, even though we know what to expect from Bojack, since he's never been in a Dimps fighting game, technically his moves are brand new. But again, we already know what to expect, but for the sake of being thorough, I will actually go into them. So the first one is Trap Shooter, which is, of course, a multi-projectile based attack, which is going to help with zoning and spacing the opponent. But the one good thing about this attack in particular is, out of all the multi-projectile based attacks, this is the only one that is cancelable. So that means that you can either charge it all the way and fire off the attack, or you can charge it a little bit and cancel out of it before Lord knows what might happen. So you actually have the option to either charge it fully and throw it out, or charge it a bit and change your mind and cancel the attack. That is oh my goodness like when i first saw that that actually blew my mind because that's going to help out a lot like let's say that you're trying to throw a trap shooter but you realize that your opponent is actually blocking and you can't actually get the attack otherwise you're going to get punished you can instantly cancel the attack and get yourself to either block or snap vanish out the way or whatever defensive measure that you might want to take that is awesome so for those of y'all that are asleep on bojack you guys are really going to want to have Trap Shooter on your created character, or those of you who actually want to use Bojack, you're going to enjoy using Trap Shooter. And then we have Reverse Launcher. Now, the best move to compare this to would be Pan's Faint Shot, because with Pan's Faint Shot, what she does is she'll stay in one location, then teleport to another and shoot off like a Key Blast. But in Bojack's case, he'll actually fire off, you know, I guess a Key Blast, and if it connects, then he'll actually teleport to where it fired off at and fire off another one, which is actually pretty cool. So the way how I see it, again, is just a better faint shot. You actually deal two hits instead of just one compared to faint shots, and you actually teleport closer to the opponent. Now, I don't know if this move is cancelable. If it was, it'd be awesome. But just the fact that you can get into your opponent's range, and again, it's another move that you can utilize for zoning and spacing to be able to enter your opponent's zone and be able to follow up with another attack is actually a really good move to have in his arsenal. And then we have Psycho Barrier, which this is more so compared to Explosive Wave, where it's just a barrier and that's, that's it. Like if your opponent is within that range, they'll get blown away and that's it. I didn't really see anything too special about this move but it's a crowd control type of super attack because one, it's an area of effect attack. So if you're within the area of effect, you will be affected. And that's about it. I don't really see this being used particularly in 1v1s unless you're in a dire or desperate situation. But besides that, it's still cool for him to have this move. And then of course we have his ultimate attack, which is Grand Smasher. Now, the thing about Grand Smasher is it's just him charging up his attack and throwing it at the opponent. It has a relatively good amount of super armor because you can keep on attacking him while he's charging it and he won't flinch, which is great. But I mean, obviously, since it's an ultimate attack, if you break 
his guard by either charging up a heavy hit or reverse dashing or whatever the case may be, then yes, then you would break through. But for the most part, it has a solid amount of super armor, which means that if you're right in front of him and you just keep on attacking, I guess recklessly, you're going to get mad punished by this attack. Now, as far as damage, it deals okay damage. I was expecting it to deal a bit more because we know that that's a powerful attack, but I mean, it is what it is. All in all, I'm happy that Bojack is in the game because I know a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, wanted Bojack in the game since Xenoverse 2 released. And I know not that many people are hyped now, seeing that, you know, he's packed in with Zamasu and Goku Black Super Saiyan Rose, but still, we finally got Bojack in Xenoverse 2. Even though most people aren't hyped anymore, I'm still happy that we even got him in the game. So that's good enough for me. All in all, I think this is actually without a single doubt the best DLC pack that we're getting so far. Because I know with the first two packs with, you know, Kaba and Frost and Champa and Vados, people were hyped. But when you got the characters, it didn't really live up to it. But after seeing this and how much time and effort they took towards developing these characters, making them truly unique from the rest of the roster, I think that this is definitely something that we should all cherish deeply because we can clearly see that they took their time with this DLC and it's not going to disappoint. So again, the DLC drops on Tuesday, April 25th. That is when we can get our hands on DLC pack three for Dragon Balls Universe 2. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But with that being said, that's going to be the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, if you did, please like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at NDKubaYT. And if you want to stay updated for all the videos I upload, don't forget to ring my bell. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys later.